Well, could a miracle be a misdiagnosis? If anyone knows, it's Dr. Chauncey Crandall. Chauncey's a world-renowned cardiologist, and he prays for every patient he sees, including a man named Jeff Markin, who died on an operating table. On the morning of September 20th, 2006, Jeff Markin remembers heading for work as usual. What he doesn't remember is driving himself to the hospital. He had called his boss and told him he didn't feel well. His boss was concerned and convinced Jeff to go to the emergency room. Somehow Jeff made it. Once he got there, he collapsed. Dr. Chauncey Crandall was doing rounds in the intensive care unit that morning. An alert call came over the PA system uh, that someone had arrived at the hospital with a massive deadly heart attack. And then a second call uh, went out over the PA system and specifically asked for me because I was the cardiologist on that day. When I arrived there, it was like a war zone. It was like being in battle. It was chaos. Everyone there fighting to keep this man alive. The ER staff worked on Jeff for 40 minutes. They shocked him a dozen times. Despite their efforts, there was no response. Once Dr. Crandall decided the team had done everything possible, he called the time of death. Well, Chauncey, uh, Chauncey Crandall is joining us right now. Uh, Chauncey, it's good to have you back on the 700. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Before I get into this story, just real quick, what do you do? You're a chief cardiologist in, in, in the hospital. What, what is your title? What experience have you got? In the, in well, I'm things? director of interventional cardiology, Pat, at one of the large hospitals in Florida. Director of interventional cardiology. Correct. And you were trained where? I was trained uh, at Yale and Duke and um, uh, Medical College of Virginia. And, you have all, and you've had years of experience in dealing with these matters? 25 years. You do open heart surgery? Well, I do the balloons and the stents. Balloons and the, how many of them have you done? Th tens and tens of thousands. Okay, so you're not an amateur. What I'm trying to get at, this, no. is, this isn't anything new to you. No, you know, I'm a conventional cardiologist. I love academics, I love research, and, okay. and I pursue the best of science. So you walked into this room that you were the head man, and it's chaos. It is chaos. When anyone dies, Pat, it's chaos, because we're all trained to work on this individual. We call an alert call and everyone from all the corners of the hospital run to that room where that individual is being coded. And Jeff was being coded that day, Pat. There was no life in his body. His body was pitch black with cyanosis, with death. And these doctors had worked on Jeff for 40 minutes and there was no life in him. And they wanted my opinion. Dr. Crandall, is there anything that we can do to save this man? And I said, no, Pat, you've done everything. We need to end this. We need to call the code. And so you did. We called the code. Yeah. He was dead. His arms were laying on the side of the stretcher and the, the nurse was preparing his body for the morgue, sponging it down, cleaning it down. Everyone left the room except the nurse and myself. And then what happened? Well, I left the room too. I wanted to get started with my work that morning, but a voice came to me. Yeah. It was the voice of God, Pat. And the voice said, turn around and pray for that man. And I said to myself, I can't pray for him. Lord, he's dead. There's nothing I can do. Mm. And I denied that voice, and I kept walking. And the voice came back again, turn around and pray for that man. So I walked back in the room, Pat. Mm -hmm. I stood next to the body, and I said, what am I going to pray, Lord? How do I pray? I've never prayed for a dead man like this. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit took over, Pat. Uh. And my prayer was this, Father God, I cry out for this man's soul. If he does not know you as Lord and Savior, raise him from the dead now in Jesus' name. The nurse was shocked. She looked at me, what are you doing? You know, were the thoughts in her eyes. And all of a sudden the emergency room physician came in and I said, shock this man one more time. He said, no, Dr. Crandall, he's gone. I said, shock him one more time. And he brought those paddles over and blasted that body 
and instantly a perfect heartbeat came back. And the abdomen started moving, Pat, and the hands started moving, and the feet started moving, and the nurse screamed. <laughs> what have you done? And I, I said, I don't know, but we have to deal with this. And we took that man down to the intensive care unit, and three days later, Pat, he woke up with the most amazing story. Well, he's here right now. You brought him, and Dr. Crandall prayed a dead patient back to life, but don't take our word for it. The patient, Jeff Markin, is here with us right now. Jeff, good Thank to see you. Thank you. God bless you. You don't look dead to me. No, I don't feel dead either. Yeah. I feel great. Well, what does it feel like to be dead? Um, or did oh you my. feel anything? Peace. Peace? Yeah, total peace. Did you know you were dying? You came into this room, you fell. I mean, here you're on this table. I, I have uh, no remembrance recollection of that day and the incidents that happened other than uh, my outer body and realizing that I had passed on and I had just total peace and tranquility during that time. But you you, you realized you had, quote, passed on. You knew you were oh, dead. Yeah. Yeah. But you, the, you were alive. Your body was dead. Um, I would say that's a good description of yeah, <laughs> what happened. But, uh, oh, did you see something or hear something? Well, I mean, uh, I was, first recollection was standing in the back of the funeral home and wondering where all my friends and family were. Because uh, I, I thought I had been loved, but nothing was going on. And uh, that's when I realized it was for me, that funeral. Mm. And um, You were I, sad because nobody came to your funeral, yes, you're dead? Uh, <laughs> well, I think the thing was, Pat, well, he said, well, I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed. He kept repeating that statement because no one was there. He was alone for eternity, Pat. Wow. Yeah. Then what happened? Well, the, as that faded uh, away, I remember staring at some bright lights that were all swirling over my head. And... Um, all of a sudden, a very nondescript image came out of those lights. The lights actually stopped, and this image came out and uh, told me that he was there to look over me and to make sure that everything was going to be okay. And I didn't know exactly what he meant because I didn't know what was going on. Um, but he, he said he had to go, but he would return. And the lights started swirling. Yes. And they stopped again. Again, I don't know the timeline. Uh, but then he did reappear, and he assured me that everything was going to be fine and that I was going to be good. Who was the he? Was it Jesus? Was it an angel? Or do you know? I would have to. He didn't identify himself as an angel, but that's the only person or thing that I could say that would be there to look over me. I couldn't believe Satan would be there to look over me and make sure well, when I was going to be fine. Word, did you, was there a feeling of peace or comfort? Or oh, yeah. Anything? I had yeah. A total peace and harmony. At that time, I had no worries. I just had it in in his hands. And uh, he, when he assured me that everything was going to be fine, uh, he said he had to go. And next thing you know, I was waking up in my daughter's arms. That's incredible. Wow. Well, and were you aware that what Dr. Crandall had been doing, that he'd prayed for you? you were I, I w wasn't uh, aware until several days later uh, when he was doing his rounds and checking up on me, that uh, he told me the extent. My daughter told me that I had a, a heart attack, mm. but I didn't know how severe it was mm -hmm. And uh, until Dr. Crandall what, what, came so in. You went to see him, Josie. What, what well, you know, you really, he woke up three days later. He was in the intensive care unit. Yeah. And when he was in the emergency room, a nurse came to me after we prayed for Jeff and said, I'm so mad at you. <laughs> yeah. Why did you pray for that man? And now look at him. He's alive. He's going to be brain dead. Oh. And three days later, uh, Jeff was in his room, and I walked in, and I said, Jeff, tell me where you were that day, because mm -hmm. it was the most amazing event. And he explained the story like he just did. But I said, Jeff, today has to be the day of salvation. We need to bring you to Jesus. Mm. And there in that hospital room, you know, I grabbed his hand, and um, Jeff and I prayed. He accepted the Lord that day in the hospital room. Yes, he did. And yeah. the nurse that was giving me all the difficulty was standing outside that room. 
And when I walked out after praying with Jeff and after Jeff accepting Christ as Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. this nurse said, Dr. Crandall, your God must be real. Wow. And she said, I cannot believe that this man is alive and he's not brain dead. Cool. Your Lord must be real. Jeff, what's your life? like now? Is it how different or is it different? Oh, uh, totally different. I, I mean, I'm definitely more uh, humble and I appreciate everything that <clears throat> goes on around me on a daily basis. Um, but my walk in Christ has grown so strong um, uh, that <clears throat> when I, it, it took me about two years mm -hmm. uh, of walking, studying, going to sermons, and then uh, I was rebaptized through our church. And at that time, my life became so in balance and mm -hmm. um, peaceful, and uh, everything was in harmony. And the light of God has just shown on me that uh, I don't have any dark spots in my life at all. And has, has that person, that being, come back to see you ever? No. Never? Has the Lord appeared and spoken to you? Um, no, no, no. I, I think he has spoken to me in other ways okay. um, by going to church and making my walk stronger and the people that I come in contact with and uh, tell my testimony to. I, I believe God is talking to me sure. in uh, that way uh, by being here uh, four and a half years after the fact. Um, the roots of the testimony are still um, spreading. Amen. And I don't Amen. think the, I don't think it has bared its fruit. Sure. Well, Chauncey, mm -hmm. something caused a heart attack. Oh, yeah. He had a massive heart attack. Massive, has, massive heart attack. And was that healed? Have you fixed that? Was that well, he, he had to have some work on his heart, but the heart attack was extreme. Massive. Massive. And massive huge heart damage. And uh, really, his heart is almost back to normal now, Pat. Whew. Simply by praying, Pat. I hear you. Okay. I think you ought to pray for people. I don't know. You all feel your faith rising? This man right. of medicine and man of God yes. is here. He's got a tremendous faith. I think you ought to pray. The people in this audience there, they may have heart trouble. They may have all kinds of trouble, but it okay. doesn't matter, does it? Well, let's pray. Right. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. You are great, Lord Father, and you are perfect in every way, and you are the only Lord, Father Amen. God. Amen. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and all of you that are looking out there. Amen. We, we pray to you. We send the Holy Spirit, Jesus, to you, that your bodies are healed, that you're mended, and that you have a long life. And we bind cancer, and we bind heart disease, and we bind infirmity in your house, and we cast it out of your home Jesus. and command it to leave right now Thank in Jesus. Jesus' name. And everyone in this room, we speak healing over your body. Yes, that God. you live a long life, that you are well, and that you are healed. You, In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Man, it's good to have you guys with us. Chauncey's yeah. written a book called Raising the Dead. A Doctor Encounters the Miraculous. You really ought to get a copy. Well, where did they get it? Well, they can get it at Barnes & Noble. They can get it on Amazon. Uh, really, any bookstore has it. All right. It's, it's doing very well, Pat. Chauncey Crandall, Raising the Dead. It's a very readable, interesting book. And, and it has Jeff's story in there, one of many stories. So this isn't the only one you've seen. You see a number of... I res I've seen two others. Two others, Raising and, the Dead. Yes. But and one have... was when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Pat. Amen. Well, you're terrific. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you want prayer, I will invite you to write in or call in 1-800-759-0700. This is going to be a week of miracles, and uh, these things are real. They've happened to real people. Jeff is a real person. He's here to mm -hmm. <laughs> give testimony yes. of the fact he was gone across the line, and he came back and with a, with a praying doctor.